and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at 10 random tips for Illustrator CS5. That's right, just 10 tips off the top of my head, no particular order, no particular reason, just 10 random tips. Actually, there is a reason to help you use Illustrator better. Now, most of these tips, um, some of these tips actually take advantage of CS5. However, some of these tips work in multiple versions. So if you're not on the latest version, you'll probably still benefit from some of the tips you're going to see here. So let's dive right in. The first tip we're going to do is actually one of my old favorites. So this one has worked for quite a while inside of Illustrator. And it's taking advantage of the appearance panel. So if you go over here, you have your appearance panel, and if you don't have it on the side there, you can just go ahead and uh, pull it up from the, I believe it's from the window menu. There it is, appearance. And once you have your appearance panel up, we're going to go ahead and just grab any tool to make a stroke. So I'm just going to use uh, the pencil tool in this case, one of my favorite tools actually for, you, for creating irregular sized or shaped strokes. So now that I have that stroke, as you can see in the appearance panel, it created a uh, yellow stroke with no fill. And what we're going to do now is go to the stroke panel and we're just going to increase the size of that stroke. We're going to make it a half inch in size. Okay, so let's go back to the appearance panel for a minute and there's our half inch stroke, which by the way, we could have also done it from here just as another bonus tip. And now that we've got our half inch stroke, here's the magic of the appearance panel. The appearance panel, you can have multiple fills, multiple strokes, and multiple effects on an object, and this is where you control it all. So we're going to go in and we're going to say that we want to create a new or add a new stroke to the existing one. So that will just duplicate it and put it right on top. Now we can go in and we can say that we want that stroke, for example, to be a different color. So I just clicked right on the color from the appearance panel, and I want this one to be black. Now, since it's the exact same size currently, it just covered up the yellow one. The yellow one is still there, but the black one is the same size right on top of it. So we're just going to change the size of the black one to be smaller. So now we can see the yellow one on the outside and the black one on the inside. Next, we're going to add one more, and we're just going to add one more new stroke. So we can stack as many of these up as we need. We're going to change the color one more time, and this time we're going to make the stroke white. All right, same thing. It's covering up the black one, and now we're just going to go ahead and change the size of it. So let's drop it down to 0.625, uh, and it's a nice white line in the middle of our black stroke, in the middle of our yellow stroke. But now we're going to go in, and we're going to actually click on this one, and we're going to make it a dashed line. So we can now go ahead, and let's make it a little bit bigger here, make the dashes bigger. Oops, not Q. <laughs> Let's tab out of that. There we go. Actually, we'll make them just a little bit longer. How about... Make them point... Oh, I don't know. How about point seven? Or actually point three instead of point oh three. There we go. And so now we've got our road. That's it. That, just that easily, we created a road that is one single path. So this means that if we reshape it, which you can do, another bonus tip with the pencil tool, is you can take an existing stroke and just reshape it to your heart's content. And you can now reshape that one path without having to deal with three separate paths to create an effect. So that was tip number one. Tip number two, we're going to go ahead and switch over to our selection tool. And I have three objects here. I have uh, three rectangles. And these three rectangles are, of course, stacked on top of each other with the green one being on top. But what if your objects were covering each other and you needed to get to an object that was below in the stacking order? Well, in previous versions of Illustrator, you might have used layers or you might have moved it out of the way to get to it. But now you can actually command click on the Mac or control click your way through to cycle through the objects underneath. So I know there's an object right here. Hold down the command key and click. And there we go. And I get the object. Click again, click, I get the object. Click again, I cycle through all three objects until I get to the one I want. Now that I'm on the one I want, I can move it, adjust it, size it, and it's like I'm working on the one that's underneath that I can't even see. So that was tip number two. Let's go over to a different document here in CS5. I've got my uh, tab documents here. And we're going to do two tips in this, in this document. Actually, we're going to do several tips in this document. 
but the first two are going to re revolve around copying. So I'm going to go ahead and select this text, and I've got the text selected. I'm just going to go up to Edit and Copy. Now, when I select a different artboard, there is a new command inside of Illustrator called Paste in Place. This is one of my favorite new commands. It comes from InDesign and other apps that have had it for a while. But when I do a Paste in Place on the other artboard, it just simply pastes that artwork in the exact same spot on the artboard where I need it. Well, that's cool, but there's we can take that one step further. We can now go in in Illustrator CS5 and say, Paste on all artboards. In other words, take that same uh, graphic that I'm going, going to need on the different pieces that I'm compiling here and just paste it in the same spot on all our boards. So that was tip number three and tip number four. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this particular area of the document and we'll deal with tip number, uh, let's see, this is going to be tip number five. So we'll just grab our selection tool. And one of the cool things is that people used to struggle with all the time is joining un closed objects, especially if you couldn't really find the two points because they were so close together. Well, now if you hit Command J on the Mac, it will just join them or Control J on Windows. It will just do it for you. That's cool and great and useful. And again, I'm going to be using it all the time. But what if you had two objects that you wanted to join together that aren't even close or touching? So there's space between these that I would normally have to you know, work my way around to get them to touch so I can join them. Not anymore. I can just hit Command J once and that will join the first path. And if I hit Command J again, that will join the second path, making this now one closed object. So that was tip number five, joining multiple objects at once. Now let's go to tip number six, which is dealing with nine slice scaling. Now, nine slice scaling is, is typically something you do in Flash. And let me explain what this means. So let's say I draw a rounded rectangle, as I just did. And of course, the corners are nice and rounded. But the problem is, if I now grab my selection tool and I reshape that object, see how my corners get distorted because of the way I'm shaping it? In other words, it's stretching the corners out into a kind of an unattractive way. So let's go ahead and undo, 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 put it back to the way it was. Let's go to our symbols panel and let's go ahead and just simply add this in as a new symbol. And here's the, here's the beauty of it. We'll call it whatever we want, round it, rec. Okay, and we have this new option now inside of Illustrator called Enable Guides for Nine Slice Scaling. So we'll just go ahead and turn that on, click OK, and now that we have that symbol, we can go ahead and delete it, by the way. Actually, yeah, well, we'll leave it. All right, so anyway, let's go, eh, we'll delete. <laughs> let's go double click on the uh, symbol we just created. And this is what it means by the guides for nine slice scaling. You can adjust these guides to basically eliminate the areas that you don't want stretched. So I'm just aligning the guides to basically eliminate the, cor the rounded corners. So I want everything that's within this guide to be stretched, everything within this guide to be stretched, everything outside of the guide not to be stretched. So then I'll just back out of this. And now when I pull this symbol out onto the page and I resize it, I don't get stretching. I don't get nearly the amount of stretching or any stretching that is not happening within the guides. So this way, no matter how big I make this or how small I make it, my corners will remain the same, not stretched. Okay, so that was tip number six. Now let's go over, actually let's zoom out. We have our multiple artboards here. And let's talk about something new in CS5 and that is the ability to name these artboards. So, you know, visually I can look at these and maybe say that this is gonna be our letterhead, envelope, and business card. But what if I really wanted to name these artboards so someone coming in after me would actually know which one's which, especially if they were the same size. So we can go to our uh, artboards panel, which is right here. And we, we now have the artboards in their default names, which is artboard one through four. And at this point, I would need to identify which one's which. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my artboard tool. Now when I have an artboard selected, I can see the current name up here. I know you see it there, but this is where you actually do the naming at the top here. And now that I've got the artboard name selected, I can go ahead and call that letterhead and that becomes the letterhead artboard. I can click on this one and call it 
envelope. Okay, and I can click on this one and call it business card. And last but not least, we'll click on this one and we'll call it flyer. Okay, so that was tip number seven, the ability to name your artboards, and now you see them in the artboard panel. Now, tip number eight is the ability to actually rearrange your artboards. So if I wanted my business card to happen before the envelope, well, I can click the move up and move down to rearrange the order. And then you're saying, well, that's great. It did it here, but it didn't really do anything in the document. And that's because we need to now do part two of this step. And that is once you get them in the order you want, then you can go to the flyout menu for the artboards panel and you can now say rearrange artboards. And this will allow you to, to rearrange them in the order you specified and however you want them laid out. So I can say, give me um, how many other columns I want, how many other rows I want. And then once I click OK, it will rearrange the artboard in that order. So number one, number two, number three, and number four are arranged just the way I specified in the artboard panel and then did the arrangement. Okay, the next one is kind of cool. It's, it's actually one of my favorite new tips inside of CS5. I'm just going to zoom into an area here. We're going to go ahead and grab our brushes panel. And in the brushes panel, I've created a new brush from one of our default symbols. So I just drug the symbol on the page, unlinked it as a symbol, then created a new brush from it. So now I can select that brush. I can go ahead and grab my brush tool. I'll go ahead and grab my Wacom pen, and I can go ahead and drag out. A new flower. Here's the problem in the past with creating these kind of custom brushes. As long as the brush is the size of the original piece of artwork, you're good to go. But the minute you make the brush or the stroke bigger, again, you're starting to distort your object. Here it was flat, here it was down, here it's really down, here the leaves are up, here they're a little bit more up, here they're, they're flat out. So if I continue to make this bigger, it's just going to distort the artwork even more. So what's the workaround now in CS5 for this or to stop this from happening? Just go ahead and double click on your brush and you now have a new option that says scale or stretch between guides. So similar to nine slice scaling, I can go ahead and just put in guides to dictate what part of the object I want stretched, which would be this, the stem here, and what parts I don't want stretched are now outside the guides. When I click OK, I'm going to get a warning that says, do you want to apply this to the existing strokes? Usually the answer is yes. And as you can see, now when I create a brush, the artwork is not stretched. I can make it as long as I want without stretching the artwork out. Now, that, in this case, I made it too short and the artwork did get stretched. But as long as I keep it the size or larger than the original brush, then I'm good to go. All right, that was tip number nine, scaling your brush. Last but not least, tip number 10, we're going to go ahead and view this document, this last document here, where I've got this dashed stroke, just like we did before. But here's the problem in this case. You notice how the dashes are really not lining up in a good spot on the corners of the arrow here. And this is because the dashes up until now have always been mathematically perfect. They're the exact size you specify and the exact spacing between the gap or the gaps between the dashes as you specify. Now I can go in to my stroke panel and I get a brand new button. So the default is preserve exact dash and gap lengths. In other words, mathematically perfect. And then this next one, align dashes to corners and path ends, adjusting the length to fit. Make it look better. <laughs> in other words, that's my favorite choice. Just make it better. So the minute I click this button, my dashes will now align perfectly to the corners, even though it may need to stretch the spacing out to make that work. It's not mathematically perfect anymore, but guess what? It looks better. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast, 10 random tips for Illustrator CS5. Hope you enjoyed it and catch you next week.